Well, hello and welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. In this episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, we're going to be building a buck converter that not only has voltage regulation, but also current limits. So I guess you're wondering just what the hell a buck converter is. Well, it's a circuit that takes a higher voltage and steps it down to a lower voltage using switch mode topology. So I've got a little basic buck converter circuit that I made here. And it's taking 12 volts and it's stepping it down to 5 volts. So let's just um, have a little look at what the waveforms on the scope are. So the blue trace is what's happening on the left side of the coil. And the yellow trace is what's happening on the right side of the coil. And of course we've also got these two meters. So this one is measuring our input voltage, this one is measuring our output voltage. So if you want the technical terms, this is what's happening at the gazenta. And this is what's happening at the gazelta. So, I am going to adjust the duty cycle. And, if you'll notice, when I make the duty cycle fatter, the voltage goes up. And when I make the duty cycle thinner, the voltage goes down. So, this is the circuit so far. So, we've got a TL494 set up as a variable duty cycle square wave oscillator and this potentiometer here is how we set the duty cycle then that's going into this gate drive chip which is basically acting as a buffer so it's doing all the heavy work so we don't overload the TL494's output chips I mean output transistors and then that's going in to our coil and our capacitor and they smooth out and average out that voltage so let's say we were running this on 10 volts and we had this set for 25% duty cycle well 25% of 10 volts would be 2.5 so that's what we would get here if we had this set to 30 we would get 3 volts 50 we would get 5 volts and so on that is of course as long as there's almost no load here. As soon as we start loading up the output, we're going to have to fatten up that duty cycle to keep the voltage the same, but eh, that's beside the point right now. You might have also noticed that there is no protection diode. Right here is where you would normally have one, but it's missing in this circuit. Now, it's not because I forgot to draw it in, and I do forget things, but the thing is, because we have two output transistors, but pardon me, in this chip here. We've got one connecting the coil to the positive and one connecting the coil to the negative. We've actually made a synchronous buck converter which doesn't need that diode because any high voltage spikes that appear across the coil are just going to be shunted straight to ground by that transistor. So we don't need to worry. And also a synchronous buck converter is a lot more efficient than a regular buck converter, but anyway, I'm going to adjust my supply so it's dead on 12 volts. Now I'm going to bring the duty cycle up to 50%. This will go the right way. So we should have about half of the supply voltage at the outputs, and yes, we do. 12 volts here, 5.99 volts here, well that's close enough. So let's just turn this up all the way. And this is as far as it will go up. Now, you might have noticed that we're only, even though this is up all the way, we're only getting 10.4 volts out. But if you look on the scope, you can see that the duty cycle doesn't go all the way up to 100%. If it did go all the way up to 100%, we would get the full voltage here. So I'm going to increase the supply voltage to 15 volts. Don't want to go too far because 
16 volts or more will fry my gate driver chip and I don't want to do that. Alright, let's back this off so we get 12 volts at the output. So, this isn't the final circuit that I'm going to do, this is just a demonstration circuit. So this is what I've got planned. So, we got our square wave oscillator here, alright, our 494, then a gate driver circuit, and then the rest of the buck converter right here. So the way the voltage is going to be regulated is got a couple of resistors here. I haven't chosen the values yet, but we're going to send a little bit of that back into the chip, and then the chip's going to do whatever it needs to do to keep the voltage, you know, where I want it. So for the current limit, got a great big fat resistor here, maybe 0.22 ohms at 5 watts, and this is going to be our current sense resistor. So, as the voltage at the load increases, the voltage at this current sense resistor is also going to increase, and as we're sending that into the chip, it'll be able to do whatever it needs to do if the current is too high. There is just um, one downside to this circuit, and that is we need to keep the supply ground and the output ground separate because we've got this resistor between the two, but that shouldn't really be much of a problem. So, this is unregulated at the moment. If I put an extra load on here, I want to see how much the voltage is going to get pulled down. So, I've got this fan here, which shouldn't be too much load for this chip. I mean, all it's powering at the moment is this little meter here which runs on the same voltage that it's measuring. So, let's just touch this and um, connect this fan. It's probably going to go down quite substantially, but... Oh, well. Okay, I was not expecting that at all. I was expecting that to drop a lot more than that. It only dropped by about 200 millivolts. So life is full of surprises. As good as this chip is. There's no way it's going to be able to handle like a big 50 watt light bulb or a great big motor or something like that. So I think it's about time to add a MOSFET to the circuit. Okay so we've now added a MOSFET so this circuit should be able to handle a lot more power than what we could get with just the chip alone. So let's turn it on. Uh, what's going on here? We're not getting as much voltage at the output as we were before. And if I connect up an extra load, it's even worse. So, what's going on? Well, we're trying to drive an N channel MOSFET that's in the high side of a circuit. And that is something that is very, very hard to do. It's very easy to drive an N-channel MOSFET that's in the low side of the circuit, but here in the high side of the circuit, it's a completely different story. Well, you see, the thing about MOSFETs is what determines how strongly a MOSFET will turn on is the voltage from the gate to the source. So with this particular MOSFET, the voltage at the gate must be at least four and a half volts higher than the voltage at the source. And I know that because I measured it. Um, this might shed some light on things. We've got a 12 volt bulb here. And in order for this bulb to light up, the voltage on one of the wires has to be 12 volts higher than whatever the voltage on the other wire is. So, if this wire was at 0 volts and this one was at 12 volts, the bulb would see 12 volts and it would light up at its full brightness. We could have 100 volts here, and 112 volts here. That's still only a difference of 12 volts, so the bulb would only see 12 volts, so again, it would light up at its full brightness, and it would be perfectly happy with that. So I've got a little demonstration circuit set up here with a MOSFET and a light bulb. And also I've got the meters to measure the various different voltages. So this one is going to show us the voltage across, as John Audio Tech would say, 
across the light bulb. And this one is going to show us our gate to source voltage. And also this is acting like a discharge resistor, so um, to discharge the gate when there's no voltage being applied to it. So I've got this wired up so the MOSFET is in the low side of the circuit. So positive is going, positive from the power supply is going into the light bulb, then into the drain of the MOSFET, and the source of the MOSFET is connected to ground. And for our control voltage, got a very, very high-tech contraption here. A battery connected in series with a push-button switch. So, the negative of the battery is connected to the ground, which you may also remember is where the source is connected. And the positive is going into one side of the switch, and the other side of the switch is going to the gate. So, let's just turn this on. So when I press the button on the switch, you can see the bulb comes on at its full brightness. We're a little bit over 12 volts, but that's not really going to matter. And we've got the full battery voltage from gate to source. So you can see that works nice and good. Okay, well this is the MOSFET in the high side of the circuit. So, what we've got here is the positive is now going straight into the MOSFET's drain and the source goes to this light bulb and then to ground. And just like before, we've got the negative of our control voltage connected to ground and the other end connected to the gate. So when I press this button, it should come on just as bright as before, right? I mean, we're putting 9 volts into the thing. So, let's see what it does. And, no, it doesn't. Okay, I'm not going to do that for too long because, like this, the MOSFET is operating in its linear region and it's going to get pretty hot pretty quickly if I keep that up. But, you saw that we're only getting about 5.5 volts across the light bulb and only 3.8 volts between the gate and the source. And you might remember that we need about 4.5 volts to make that come on full. So, you see, the thing is, because we've got voltage flowing out of the source and the control voltage negative is connected to ground, that means the voltage between the drain and the source is just never going to get high enough to turn that MOSFET on full. So, is that the end? Does that mean this project is just cancelled right here? Well, not exactly. If I take our control voltage negative here, connect that to the source and try it again. As you can see now, we've got the full battery voltage between drain and source, I mean gate and source, and we've got the full 12 volts flying through the bulb. But of course this really isn't the answer because, you know, I want everything to be on one common ground. And if I do that, put everything on a common ground, we're now back to square one again. So if only there was a way we could somehow shift the level of that voltage and get it up to where it needs to be. Well, the short answer to that is that we can, but it's going to require some thinking, which I'm going to do for you. Um, um, um. And this is what I've come up with. And I built the circuit, tested it, and I'm happy to say it works absolutely flawlessly. The only downside is it does need a separate supply here, which I've labeled bias because that's basically what it is. So this is what's going to power our MOSFET gate. And I've drawn it like a battery so it's more easy to see how it's connected. I mean, it doesn't have to be a battery, it could be separate winding from a transformer, it could be uh, some, you know, you know, anything that's going to supply the voltage there. But anyway, the way the circuit works is when the TL494 is in its one state, the voltage at this NPN space will get pulled down to nothing, so this NPN turns off. 
and this NPN can turn on because now this base can be pulled up by this resistor here. So this transistor turns on and all that voltage flows into the MOSFET gate. The MOSFET turns on full. We get the full voltage coming out here and it stays relatively cool. Now, when the 494 is in its zero state, then this space can get pulled up by this resistor here. So this transistor turns on. So all this voltage here gets shunted to ground. So this NPN turns off, this PNP turns on instead, and the MOSFET can discharge through it. So here's that circuit I was just talking about. This is where our 12 volt bias is coming in and I'm just using a light bulb connected to the raw PWM output of the MOSFET. So um, let's plug in our bias voltage. And now let's turn our main power on. And there we go. So I'm measuring the gate to source voltage on the scope. And as you can see, we've got a pretty good square wave there. And as I adjust the PWM, I can make the voltage go up and down. So this seems to work really well. Anyway, let's just um, have a look at the voltage between gate and ground. And as you can see, this is the voltage between gate and ground. You can see it's up around 23 volts. And this is the voltage between gate and source. Or from gate to source. Between gate and source, from gate and source, they both mean the same thing. Okay, I've replaced this capacitor here because this one is only rated for 16 volts and I want to step the supply voltage up to the full voltage of my power supply which I'm going to do right now. So here we are with the 23 volts powering the thing. Now I'm going to vary the supply voltage between 12 and 23 volts which is the upper limit of my power supply. Now as you can see the voltage, the voltage between gate and source it doesn't really change that much. Strangely enough it does go a little bit down as I increase the supply voltage but that's not really going to be much of a problem. So I've added the coil, the capacitor and the diode running this off the original voltage that we started with and when I turn the duty cycle up all the way our output voltage is right where it was when we were using the gate driver chip. Anyway, in the next video, I'm going to be adding the regulation and everything because I'm sure this video is getting very long. I've got a whole crap ton of editing to do, so that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider giving me a big thumbs up smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and leave a comment if you have one and as always until next time goodbye